everyone, happy Monday. I'm Dr. Maria Morrison. I'm an audiologist at Geneva Hearing Services. And today is the start of Tinnitus Awareness Week. So I love this week because it allows me the opportunity to educate you on the symptoms of tinnitus, how it can affect your life, and what you can do at home if you have it. So every day this week, every morning, I'm gonna jump on and do a quick live video on a topic related to tinnitus. So today we're gonna to jump in and just kind of go over the basics. So first, it's important to understand that there's two pronunciations, tinnitus and tinnitus, and both pronunciations are absolutely correct, okay? Now, what is it? What is tinnitus? Tinnitus is when someone is experiencing a sound in their ears or their head, but it's not coming from their environment, right? It's commonly referred to as ringing in the ears, but it can be um, a buzzing sound, swishing, clicking, crickets, cicadas. Um, I myself, I have tinnitus, and to me, it sounds like bacon frying in a pan, kind of like a sizzling sound. Now, I really like bacon, so maybe that's why I choose the phrase bacon frying in a pan um, as the way that I describe my tinnitus, but it can sound like many different things. Now, tinnitus can be acute, meaning temporary, and it can also be chronic, meaning a long-term issue. And it's very prevalent. It's actually one of the most common health conditions in the United States. In fact, the CDC estimates that nearly 15% of the general population, um, that's over 50 million Americans, experience some form of tinnitus. So it's really, really prevalent. Now, the question might be, well, what causes it, right? And there's lots of causes of it, and I'm just gonna kinda go over the most common causes. So certainly, noise-induced hearing loss is a very common cause of tinnitus, but so is a big hunk of wax in your ears. Um, stress, 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 stress is a huge cause of tinnitus. Um, certain medications can cause it, age-related hearing loss, um, acoustic trauma, head trauma. Um, acoustic trauma is when you have a really loud, sudden noise go off near your ear. Um, think of like a firework or a gunshot. Um, all of that can cause tinnitus. So the next question is, well, if you have it, then what do you do? Where do you go? And so that's gonna depend on a few things. So first, if you have tinnitus, but you've also maybe had a head injury or you're experiencing some paralysis in your face, or maybe you've had a really sudden change in your hearing, right? If you have any of those symptoms, you're gonna wanna go to the emergency room immediately, like right away, go, okay? Maybe you've got tinnitus with extreme anxiety or debilitating depression. So if that's happening, you can go to the emergency room or you can go to a mental health facility. It's really important to go to one of those two facilities if that's what you're experiencing, okay? Maybe your tinnitus kind of pulsates with your heartbeat, or you're experiencing some dizziness or some vertigo, or maybe you've got some significant pain or drainage from the ears. If you're experiencing that, then you should go to your ear, nose, and throat physician. Now, maybe you are like most people, and you're not experiencing any of that, right? There's no facial paralysis, there's no sudden change in hearing, there's no dizziness or vertigo, there's no drainage from your ears, and you just have tinnitus. Well, if that's the case, then you wanna see your audiologist. Now, tune in tomorrow, because I'm gonna go over why it's important to see your audiologist, okay? I hope everybody has a wonderful day, enjoy the gorgeous sunshine, and I look forward to seeing you soon, bye-bye. Good morning, it is day two of Tinnitus Awareness Week. Again, my name is Dr. Maria Morrison. I'm an audiologist here at Geneva Hearing Services. And yesterday's video, I went over what tinnitus is, um, what are the most common causes, and of course, what specialist should you see if you're experiencing tinnitus? Well, today I wanna to talk to you about how an audiologist can help. So as an audiologist who specializes in tinnitus management, of course I'm going to do a comprehensive evaluation. We want to rule out any medical concerns that there can be. In addition to testing your hearing, I also want to assess your tinnitus in the booth. I want to know what does it sound like to you? Um, what's the pitch or frequency? How loud is it? All that information I gather during the assessment is going to help in the management process. Now, if you have tinnitus, 
but perhaps don't live in the area, a wonderful resource is the American Tinnitus Association. Simply visit ata.org for more information. Now, most patients with tinnitus really tend to focus on the sound itself, which unfortunately only makes it seem louder. Our bodies have this incredible fight or flight warning system to help keep us safe, which is really important. However, sometimes that system can cause some issues with tinnitus. So imagine you are walking in the woods. It is a beautiful summer day. You're in the middle of the woods, enjoying this nature path, enjoying the sounds of nature, and all of a sudden you begin to hear a sound. If you're like me, you panic and you think there's a snake, right? I hate snakes. So hearing a sound in the woods would be very um, troublesome for me. Um, what happens is my body's gonna kick into a fight and flight mode, right? It senses danger. So my heart rate's gonna increase, my blood pressure's gonna rise, my muscles are gonna tense. But in addition, when you're in that fight or flight mode, your brain is actually gonna be able to tune in to that sound and amplify it. The fight or flight system allows your brain to amplify that sound to help you find where it's coming from to protect you from the danger. This is exactly what your fight or flight system is meant to do. Find the threat to protect yourself, right? Now you're back in the woods, you're looking for the snake and you see someone letting air out of their tire and you realize, whew, not a snake, right? Deep sigh of relief, continue on your walk and enjoy your, your nature walk in the woods. Unfortunately for a lot of tinnitus patients, their brain is treating tinnitus as a threat. It doesn't know what it is, and so it's focusing on it. Well, the more we focus on it, the louder it gets, right? And the louder it gets, the more frustrated or worried or concerned or angry we get. And the stronger that emotion, the more we focus on it. And the more we focus on it, the louder it gets. And you can kind of see it creates this vicious cycle. And so the goal of tinnitus management is not to get rid of the sound itself. It's actually pretty impossible. But the goal is to get your brain to treat tinnitus as a neutral sound and not a threat, okay? I want you to think about your refrigerator fan and your kitchen, right? The refrigerator fan, it kicks on and kicks off throughout the day, but you don't react to it. It doesn't elicit an emotion. You're not worried when the refrigerator fan kicks on that there's something wrong, right? The reason that doesn't happen is because your brain has categorized that sound from the refrigerator as a neutral sound. It's not a threat, it's nothing to pay attention to, which is why you don't react to it. So again, the goal of tinnitus management is to get your brain to treat your tinnitus as neutral so that you only notice your tinnitus when you're thinking about it. Now, how do we do that? Well, you'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out. Um, until then, enjoy the beautiful sunshine and I'll see you soon, bye-bye. Burr and happy Wednesday. It is day three of Tinnitus Awareness Week. I am Dr. Maria Morrison, audiologist at Geneva Hearing Services. Now, in yesterday's video, I talked about the vicious cycle tinnitus patients can get stuck in. You know, the louder their tinnitus gets, the more they think about it. The more they think about it, the louder it gets. So the rest of this week, I wanna talk about strategies you can begin using right away to help reduce the impact tinnitus is having on your life, okay? Today, we're gonna to be talking about sound. Sound can be a really incredibly powerful tool. It can be used um, for soothing, it can be used for distracting, and it can be used as a contrast. So I'm gonna go over some examples. In regards to a contrast, I want you to imagine we are in a pitch black room, it's really dark, okay? And I light a candle. The flame of that candle is gonna seem really bright in that dark room. Now, if I turn the lights on in the room, the flame doesn't seem so bright. But did the flame actually change? Nope, the environment changed. And the same is true with your tinnitus. In a quiet room, your tinnitus is gonna seem louder. So we wanna add some background noise to your environment to help reduce the perceived loudness of your tinnitus. The sounds really can be anything. Um, you just don't want it to be bothersome or annoying, right? Because we already have 
an annoying sound. We have the tinnitus. We don't want to add another one. But it could be something simple as a box fan running, right? Or opening the windows and hearing the traffic noise, whatever. Just as long as it's adding a little bit of contrast to your environment. So that's one way to use sound. Another way to use sound is for soothing. So think of a babbling brook, right? Or listening to the waves of an ocean crashing along the shore. Listening to those types of sounds can have a relaxing effect on our body. This is really important. Anytime that we can reduce stress or anxiety, we can help our bodies better manage our tinnitus. So that's how you can use sound to soothe you. Now you can also use sound as a distraction. Think of TV, radio, audiobooks, podcasts. These are all examples of sounds that you're gonna to listen to attentively, right? And it's gonna distract you. It's gonna keep your mind off your own tinnitus. So again, sounds can be used for soothing, they can be used for distracting, and they can be used as adding contrast to your environment. Now, tune in tomorrow, because I'm gonna be talking about doing some fun activities and some relaxation. So I'll see you then, stay warm, and have a great day, bye-bye. Hello, can you believe we are on our fourth video for Tinnitus Awareness Week? Yesterday I talked about how we can use sound to make our tinnitus seem softer. And remember, we wanna make it seem softer so that we can change the way we're reacting to it. Using sound is just one way we can manage our reactions to tinnitus. Other more fun and relaxing ways include pleasant activities, relaxation exercises, and changing our thoughts about tinnitus. Now that last one we're gonna to conquer tomorrow. Today we're really gonna focus on the relaxation activities um, and the pleasant activities. So remember, stress is going to make our tinnitus seem louder and make it more difficult for us to manage it. Anytime that we can reduce stress, reduce anxiety, and just relax the body, we're better able to manage our tinnitus. And we can do this in really easy ways. So deep breathing is an easy way to relax your body. I personally use the 555 breathing technique. So you simply breathe in for five, you hold for five, and then you exhale for five. And you do that five times in a row. So very simple, and it doesn't take a lot of time. Other relaxation exercises, um, meditation, imagery exercises, even yoga. Um, there's lots to choose from. What's important is that you make it a consistent part of your daily routine. It doesn't need to be an hour long. I'm talking five, 10 minutes of just daily relaxation exercises to relax your body, reduce the blood pressure, and that's gonna help you manage your tinnitus better. So what about the fun stuff? What do you enjoy doing? Um, maybe it's sitting on the couch and watching a movie with a loved one, or perhaps you really enjoy building model planes or going for a walk outside. I know COVID has made things maybe a little difficult, maybe increased some stress lately. Um, I myself, I really enjoy visiting with my sister. Um, unfortunately, she lives in Missouri, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for us to stay in touch and stay close. So we have had to reimagine what that looks like. And we've come up with a few things. Um, we do online trivia games together, which is a total hoot. You should try it if you haven't. We do Zoom chats with the whole family, um, and even the kids can stay in touch together through video games. So even though they're not in the same room together, they can play the video game, see each other on the screen, and hear each other through the video game, which is crazy to me. They're not in the same room, they're in completely different states, and it's if they're in the same room. So technology is a wonderful thing. Um, but this is what we have found um, that's enjoyable to us and ways that we've had to kind of reimagine how to make it enjoyable. And so I want you to think about, well, what brings you joy? What do you enjoy doing? How can you add some activities that are pleasant for you? It's important to remember that the loudness of tinnitus isn't going to determine how bothersome it will be. There's lots of studies that show the loudness of tinnitus does not predict the amount of impact it's going to have on a person's life. What will predict that impact is their thought process, the patient's mindset about the tinnitus. Now this is really important. We're going to cover this tomorrow, so be sure to tune in tomorrow. 
Now, I hope everyone is staying warm and staying safe. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hello, happy Friday. It is day five of Tinnitus Awareness Week and my last video. So the last couple days, I've talked about how sound and pleasant activities can help reduce the impact tinnitus is having on your life. Well, today I wanna to talk about something much more important, and that is your thoughts. So the way you think will affect how you feel, and I wanna give you an example. So imagine you are having people over for dinner and your guests are running late. How you think about the fact that your guests are running late is going to affect how you feel about it, right? So if you think, man, how rude is it them to not even call, you might feel angry. If you think, oh gosh, I hope they weren't in a car accident with all this bad weather, you might feel worried. Or if you're like me, you're gonna think, woohoo, I got some extra time to clean up my house before they arrive, right? And so I'm gonna feel relieved. But in this example, the event is the same. Someone's late for dinner, but our thoughts are different. So sometimes the way we feel is caused by the thoughts of the event and not the event itself. Remember, stress and negative emotions can impact our health in negative ways, right? Um, when we're stressed, our brain releases hormones into our bodies. Um, this creates changes in our bodies, right? It increases our heart rate, our blood pressure, our muscle tension. And these changes allow us to, reflect, um, to react quickly in emergencies, which is really helpful if there's a threat. However, if our brain releases too many of these hormones too often, it can affect our health in negative ways. So it's important to take time to breathe. And I know that seems silly because we breathe all day long, but I mean really take a moment to take a deep breath. <sighs> Loosen up, take another deep breath. It's important to find time to rest, relax, and reflect on our thoughts. It's not only important for your tinnitus, but for your overall health and well-being. Reflecting on our thoughts gives us the opportunity to figure out, is this a negative thought or a positive thought, right? Are these thoughts rational or irrational? All throughout the day, we have these automatic thoughts that pop into our head. And unfortunately, they're not always rational thoughts. So imagine you're in the city, a new city, and you need to to catch a train and you accidentally get on the wrong train, right? You might have this quick automatic thought of, oh man, I'm never gonna learn how the subway system works. That's an example of an irrational thought, right? You're never gonna learn how the subway system works, really? That's probably not true. You just got on the wrong train one time, one mistake, right? And so these irrational automatic thoughts can have negative consequences, especially if we believe them, which unfortunately many of us do. So in this example, this gentleman, um, if he truly believes that he's never gonna learn the subway system, he might start paying for cabs everywhere he goes, which is really expensive, or worse yet, he's gonna stop going to those activities so he can avoid the train altogether. And we don't want that, right? That's not the quality of life that we want for ourselves. So find time, and I'm not talking hours a day, I'm talking five to 10 minutes a day to rest, relax, reflect on your thoughts. You'd be surprised how much of a positive impact this can have on your life, especially if you make it part of a daily practice. So that's it for me. That's it for Tinnitus Awareness Week. This is the last video. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, if you have any suggestions or feedback or ways to make them better, um, I'm all ears, no pun intended. I would love your, uh, your feedback. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Please stay warm and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.